Okay, I think I got everything right. What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to another Build Secrets Rotary Engine in Detail video. Okay, so a question that I get asked a lot is how expensive is it to rebuild a rotary engine? And there are a million different ways that I can answer that question. So this video is going to kind of outline different pricing-ish, well I guess, this video is going to kind of outline the different levels of engine rebuild and what kind of goes into each one. So it's going to be a lot of me talking and showing you parts, so if you, you know, okay, so this video is going to be a lot of me talking and showing you parts, so I'll try my best to make it quick, but I also want to make sure that you guys you know, learn something. This is important, right? If you have a rotary engine that somebody has told you that it needs rebuilt, what are the ways that it can fail, have failed, and what does it take to fix those? And I know that there's a bajillion different things to do that, but I'm just going to put it all in one video. You guys can, can learn and do whatever. So here we go. First things first, your rotary engine blew up and it doesn't make any compression. Okay. There are multiple different ways that a rotary engine can lose compression. All right, so on the inside of a rotary engine, you have a rotor right here. This is the thing, just like a piston, that seals against all the different sides and, and makes your compression, right? This goes inside the housing and makes fire happen. On this rotor, there are apex seals, corner seals, and side seals. Those three different types of seal are what combined make the combustion chamber. Okay, so on this side here, you can see there's a side seal still in this one, still in this one. This is your corner seal. This goes in here, and then your apex seal goes in the crease of that, right? Right here. I won't say, oh, your apex seals wore out. You got to rebuild it. Go replace the apex seals. All right, so that's all loosely fit together, but you can see how that is. All right, every single one of those seals is spring-loaded. Okay, so the seal sits on a spring, the spring sits in the rotor. When the engine is all put together, it's compressed, thus the springs are holding the seals against the combustion chamber, walls, surfaces, housings, irons, whatever, right? So the corner seal has to be pushed against the iron, the side seal has to be pushed against the iron, the apex seal gets pushed out against the housing, right? So if any one of those situations fails you can lose compression through one of those areas right if your side seal springs are too soft they can't push hard enough against the housing to seal in the combustion you'll lose combustion pressure right psi will be lower if the side seal itself is too short because it's wore out it doesn't matter how strong the spring is because the seal is too short the spring is overextended and it won't put enough pressure, therefore you lose combustion out the side seal, right? Same principles apply for all the other seals on the rotor. The apex seal, you could have an apex seal spring. So this is an apex seal spring. You can see the nice curve to it, right? I'm sure if I dig through here, here you go. You can have an apex seal spring that's flatter, that has worn out, Right, with all the heat cycles, it's worn out and it's gotten flat and it's not pushing hard enough on that apex seal, thus not making compression. Right, so same thing that I explained earlier your apex seals, these could wear down and just be shorter and not have enough and not be able to put enough force to make compression. Right, so that's the general gist of compression failures that aren't catastrophic. Okay, a catastrophic failure would mean that you have taken an apex seal and broken it chipped it bent it all sorts of different things can happen as soon as you add boost high horsepower lots of cylinder pressure we'll say into the mix weird stuff happens you get detonation you can bend them you can do all you can warp them you can do all sorts of stuff to them and those are what i would consider catastrophic failures right generally if an apex seal breaks it's going to play ping pong with a bunch of stuff and wreck everything housing iron the whole deal right so rebuilding an engine that has a compression failure right could be as simple as you pull the motor apart 
housings are mint, the irons are mint, the apex seals are perfectly fine, the corner seals and springs are perfectly fine, the side seals, side seal springs might be a little weak. This is a common failure point in RX-8s. The side seal springs will wear out because the RX-8s have a side exit exhaust port and that's a lot of heat coming in right here on the side of this rotor and it's going to wear out the side seal spring. And let me grab a side seal spring and I'll show you just how weak these things are because it's not doesn't take that much to ruin one. So, this is a side seal right here. This is a side seal outside of the rotary engine. You can see very thin. Got a nice little hook to it. Each end is chamfered to fit tightly up against the corner seal. And this little thing, which you can't even see right now, right there, is a side seal spring. Okay, it sits in there like this. You see the right, uh, valleys and mountains on it. That's what makes the spring pressure. It's pushing vertically down on this. So, say those springs wear out, you want to replace them. A side seal spring, one, from Mazda is $2. Okay, your rotary engine has 12 of them. Do the math. 24 bucks, okay? A side seal, to get a new side seal, right, from Mazda, not that expensive. You can order just side seals, okay? Side seals and springs, put them in there, okay? Apex seals is where things get more expensive. You can pay a lot of money for fancy iRotary seals, or you can buy the budget Atkins rotary seals for a couple hundred bucks, okay? So, assuming you have to fix whatever is done here you can only replace small bits of this right you can rebuild your rotary engine when you come and take those pieces out you take your apex seals out you take your apex seal springs out i'll link the the video to this book right here rotary engine overhaul criteria and criteria for replacement parts you can check with like a dial caliper micrometer the spec on all of those seals. There's a way to tell that side seal springs are wore out. There's a way to tell that side seals are too thin. There's a way to tell that apex seals are too thin. And then you can decide from there if you want to reuse them. Okay? So, I've rebuilt engines and reused parts. I've rebuilt engines and reused parts that didn't make enough compression for me and had to take them back apart. That's a risk you're going to have to be willing to take. Assuming all of your stuff is in spec, it should be fine, but you don't ever really know, right? Also, in theory, you could use used rotor seals from another engine in your engine if you really wanted to. I'm not one to say that you can't do it. I personally wouldn't do it, but you can do it however you want. The hard part with a used part, okay, so this right here is an Atkins apex seal, right? Two mil apex seal, okay? It has basically no grooves in the contact surface of the apex seal, right? If I grind it over one of these, just nice, smooth metal on metal noise, right? Okay, that seal was in an engine, didn't get ran for very long, didn't have any grooves in it. This apex seal right here is a 12A RA super seal that came out of a half bridge port motor that I blew up at the tail of the dragon, right? Got the motor hot, corner seal cracked, wrecked everything, okay? This one, although it might be tall enough, doesn't have many miles on it, anything crazy. RA super seals are hard. 12A housings, generally pretty tough. Listen to this. Hear the grittiness? You can probably see the grittiness in the end of it there. So, much like piston rings seat to the cylinder walls, seals in your rotary engine are going to seat to the housings and irons. So, you're going to see that if you're rebuilding your engine and you want to reuse the apex seals, I would put them back in the exact same location, in the exact same housing, in the exact same orientation on the rotor such that all of the pre-worn grooves line up, therefore giving you the best chance at having good compression, right? So, that is kind of explaining this bit here, okay? In order to take a rotary engine apart, all right, here is the blanket price for having to pull an engine apart and put it back together, and this also is gonna take us to the next piece of having to rebuild your engine. 
a soft seal kit for a rotary engine is going to be sub 200 bucks. Okay, that's going to be coolant seals, dowel pin O-rings, other assorted gaskets for your intake manifold, exhaust, um, O-rings for the oil pedestal here. So these O-rings here, you're going to have a front cover gasket, you're going to have an oil pump O-ring for the front cover, all of that, right? That's a soft seal kit. Sub 200 bucks. it's going to come with all of it. Here's some old coolant seals here. You can see these chilling right okay personally if i have to take a rotary engine apart that i put together if i didn't take it apart within 20 minutes of me putting it together right i.e assembled something wrong i am going to reuse or not i am going to buy new soft seals for the whole motor i don't care i've tried to clean them up in the past i just just don't trust them so if you have a coolant seal leak all right you're spitting coolant out the exhaust you can fix that for under 200 bucks yourself. You can pull your motor apart, leave all the apex seals in their exact location, mark them, do whatever you need to do, clean everything up the best you can, put new coolant seals in it, and put the whole thing back together and be okay. You don't need to buy the master $3,000 rebuild kit that comes with every single new part to fix a coolant seal leak. All right. Now, this is where things get tough for your coolant seal leak, right? And this is where you don't know this until you take your motor apart. So if you have a 12A or an early 13B or a GSLSE, even an RX-8, right? Those motors have the coolant grooves in the housings, okay? You can see here where the coolant seal sits, the groove for it is in the housing. Aluminum is a lot stronger when it comes to getting heated than steel it's more brittle but it's stronger right so typically on motors engines that have the coolant grooves in the housings if you have a coolant seal failure it's mostly because it most likely because it overheated and actually cooked the physical rubber seal if you have an fd engine like this iron or an fc engine like this iron the coolant grooves are machined into the irons. Steel being a little bit less tolerable to heat, and especially these really thin spots down here where this coolant groove interfaces with the coolant passageways, they have a tendency to break that groove. So what will happen is the compression from the engine will, once it's hot, will physically crack the edge of the groove off, Thus, the seal not breaking, but the seal popping out of the groove and letting coolant come in the combustion chamber. So, um, this one's cleaner, so it'll probably look better. Um, but basically, imagine this little edge right here, where my fingernail is, breaking, and then the seal popping out into the coolant groove, okay? That's going to cause your coolant leak, the engine's going to suck um, coolant in, thus having a coolant seal failure. Now, like I just said a minute ago... As long as that's not broken, soft seal kit, put it back together, you're good. If it's broken, you now have to source another iron, which means the mating surface for all your rotor seals is not going to be the same, which means that reusing all of your seals might not be conducive to the best running engine. I will say this, if you're on a budget and you don't really care that one of your rotors makes 5 to 10 PSI more compression than the other one, you just want your car to run and drive and have fun. You're not looking for performance. Send it. Build it. Make it work. I mean, there's no, um, in my opinion, getting your car fixed and running on the road sometimes is more important than saving money and having the best build. I mean, if that, if it's, if you don't have enough, you know, obviously income and this, that, and the other to do a full-fledged build, then, then you don't. I mean, if you enjoy your car, make it run. So that's the coolant seal failure and compression seal failure. Now, in addition to coolant seals, there's other ways that your motor can break and spit coolant out of it that are going to require you to pull your engine apart. This iron came out of a friend of mine's iron. This iron came out of a friend of mine's engine, and it has failed in a way that I've never seen before. And I don't think there's going to be a super great way for me to show you this, but I'm going to try my best. This iron, center iron, has cracked down here inside of the oil galley slash coolant area. So this big hollow spot right here, there's oil in here, right? It's gonna come out of the rotor bearings and you'll have oil in this spot. The outer bit of this, 
outside is coolant. You can see that the coolant area, see the lights coming through down in there? The crack right here. So you can see that the coolant area obviously froze, the freeze plugs didn't work and it cracked the center iron. This engine got rebuilt because it had a coolant seal leak, put all the way back together, put coolant in it, still getting coolant in the oil. What the hell? So that engine got taken apart. We found the center iron was shacked up and they put it back together. Probably had to buy a new soft seal kit. The engine probably ran. I mean, I think it ran before the coolant seals popped. So this is just a good, good one I wanted to show you to kind of reiterate that coolant seal failure, okay? Or just coolant leak failure, right? Now, other things. We're going to move on to the oiling system, okay? The oiling system can cause a lot of issues within your rotary engine, i.e. wearing out bearings, right? Or you can just have oil leaks in really bad places. Okay, so we'll start there. First things first, oil leaks in bad places. You have in your engine two sets of dowels that run all the way from the front iron to the rear iron of the engine. Those dowels, the upper set of dowels, actually passes oil through them. Um, let me find a dowel real quick. No. No. Yeah, okay. All right. So, the dowels pass oil through them, the top one, okay? So up here, the, where this dowel right here goes through the engine, you'd have one sticking out, kind of meeting here in the middle of the center iron, just like this, going back and forward. This goes through the housing right here, and then edges into the front iron up there, same thing into the rear iron here. There's another dowel down here, but this one is what we're gonna call dry. It does not have oil going through it. Okay, if you have an oil leak on your rotary engine in this area, right, or underneath the oil pedestal, per se, okay, right here, if you have an oil leak up in here, up in here, up in here, it might not be the turbo fitting here, it might not be the actual oil pedestal, it might not be your oil pressure sensor, right? You can crack the rear iron, and by that, I mean the rear iron can twist and crack around that dowel area, and if that's cracked, it's going to spit oil out of it. You can also have a dowel pin o-ring failure, okay? In the housing, on all the motors, there is a groove around the dowel pin, and there's an o-ring that goes in here. If you forget to put them in when you put your engine together, if they dry up and leak, if you bought a car that sat for a while and you just got it running again, they could leak. That is going to require you to take your whole entire engine apart. So you'll have to split it, pull it all apart, put it all together. That's going to be a simple soft seal kit, put it back together, assuming right, everything's good to reuse. Okay, so bearing failures, right? If you spin a bearing in the rotor, most likely it could lock up, but um, the rotor will then contact other things around it. Okay, so now since the rotor bearing spun, the tolerances aren't there, this can wobble. This rotor here came out of an engine that spun a bearing, and you can see all of the marks on this rotor from it contacting the rear iron or front iron and tearing the heck out of this rotor. Okay. Same here. Roached. This side seal is probably not going to come out. Okay. Neither will this one. So, rotor bearings, stationary gear bearings, both of them can fail. Both of them can put bearing material in everything and wreck all sorts of stuff. Both of them can put bearing material on the faces of the irons and rotors, or on the faces of the irons and housings. I mean, that's just, that's part of it, right? When things come apart, they tear stuff up, okay? So, I think that outlines just about everything as far as failures within the engine that would come from just say a like some stock engine, right? When you, you bought a car that's got issues, those are the things you should look for, right? Um, trying to get my thoughts together where do we want to go so when it comes to performance engine builds we'll talk about we'll talk about porting real quick okay so porting rebuilding an engine for porting all right you can have the best 50,000 mile 
best condition stock port motor, da 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 da, whatever you want, right? You can take that motor apart, port it, put it right back together. It's off seal kit, right? No issues. It should just go back together, okay? Assuming nothing was broken, which is normal, right? If you're going to take your motor apart, you might find stuff that's broken or really close to being out of spec, stuff like that you want to replace. Now, ports can also cause issues, okay? For example, if you're going to bridge port, full bridge port your car, right? Inner and outer. Something to be aware of is that a typical apex seal is two pieces. You have the main piece here, and then you have the little triangle piece right here that goes on the corner of it, okay? So this is gonna sit like this right here. This one's pretty wore out. You're gonna see just like that, okay? This little corner sits here, rides in there. The apex seal spring, this is a 13B one on a 12A apex seal, but the apex seal spring sits under there and holds them both up. Okay, the reason for that little corner is that thermal expansion, the seal needs to be able to grow. Now, if you do big enough ports, big enough bridge ports, you might have to run a one-piece apex seal, okay? Or, if you just do a half bridge, you can put the quarters, the little corner of the apex seals, on the port that's not bridge ported, right? Reason being, that little corner can fall out. That corner can fall through the bridge. It can break stuff. You never know. So if you want to do a full bridge port and you're going to do that, maybe consider changing up what style apex seals you have to be able to accommodate that. You can put it back together with the regular ones. I don't know if my full bridge is done like that or, or this, that, and the other. Um, but typically, just be aware of that a little bit. The full bridge port as well can cause issues. You can catch corner seals. You can catch stuff because the bridge is going to be here. The bridge is called a bridge port because it's providing a bridge for the corner seal to ride on across the intake port. If that bridge wasn't there, the corner seal would fall out into the port. So, all that stuff being said, when it comes to to this, that, the other, catastrophic failure, that, this, that, all that stuff, coolant seals, oil leaks, bearing failures. Okay, so now we're going to talk about common things that are not reusable within your engine, okay? And this is going to, the most important one is just housings, all right? Typically, when you take apart a rotary engine nowadays, they're 40 years old, the housings are going to look like this. They're going to have the chrome all flaked off of them. They're going to have some gouges in them. They're going to have all sorts of just crazy stuff going on in the housings, okay? They're not all going to look like this right here, which is actually a pretty good housing. It's got a little bit of edge wear, but not in, you know, that's not too terrible, okay? So, any imperfections in the housing is going to cause compression issues, right? Whether it's grooves, whether it's chrome flake coming off, that's also going to cause excessive wear on your apex seals, right? So although your apex seals might be within spec height-wise, they might be too grooved up across the top to really reuse them, okay? So you'd have to replace that stuff. Housings, on the other hand, I don't think that they make brand new ones anymore, especially for 12As, especially for old school 13Bs, GSLSEs, right? You can't just go buy new ones. And if you can, you're going to pay probably more than what your car's worth by the time you get your engine rebuilt, all right? Because you're going to need two of them, probably 800 bucks a piece, or 1600 bucks, $200, whatever, this, that, and the other. Might throw some Apex seals in there. Boom, you're sitting at 2500 three grand. And I know that I can buy first gen chassis for 800 bucks though. So, you know, be aware of, of that whole deal, but there are, and I'm not going to tell you my opinions on reuse or what housings that are, or housings that are able to be reused or not. You can make a post somewhere and ask somebody else. Um, I personally would not rebuild an engine for anyone else that didn't have pretty much perfect housings. All right. Now I wouldn't use this housing right here in my own personal engine rebuild. I would probably use this housing here in one of my own personal engine rebuilds. It's got some flaking, flaking on the edge, but the majority of the surface is pretty good. Here's some chatter marks from most likely where this housing sat, right, and had some rust in it. But you could resurface these a little bit. You can put them on a sander and, and sand them. You can run it over with a Scotch-Brite pad to try to help it out. Just don't sand through the chrome, right? 
So largely, those will be your biggest expense. Irons are generally pretty easy to come by because people who break engines and take them apart to part them out most likely sell the housings before they sell irons. So you can get irons for a reason, you know, a couple hundred bucks a piece um, that are in pretty good shape. I, I would say it's it's pretty hard to tear up an iron when you break your engine. I mean, even when I cracked um, my corner seal off and, and drove it 100 miles home on one rotor, I mean, I ruined my housings, but I didn't have my irons are still reusable. Heck, they're in Charles's truck right now, um, my half bridge irons. So that's something else. Another thing, just, just while we're talking about replacement parts and buying new irons and housings and this and the other, if you have a street port or a race port or a bridge port, not all ports are the same. Okay, if you go and buy somebody's advertised, I have one used Series 4 Turbo 2 bridge port iron, right? Most likely they blew their motor up, ruined the front iron, and are trying to sell you the rear iron or vice versa, right? Okay, if you have a bridge port and you're trying to buy another bridge port, the ports, I guarantee you, will not be the same. So you'll have to go through and either make yours bigger to match that one, make that one bigger to match yours, find some balance therein of the two things, or you just, it's, it's just, you can't do it because it won't match. So, same thing, street port, race port, whatever, all that stuff. So, be very aware when you're buying used parts that the port matters. Most of the time, if I'm trying to buy used parts, I'm going to buy as many stock ports as I can. Okay, and if I personally ruin some iron or housing, that's a port, ported this, ported that, I won't even try to sell it because most likely no one's going to be able to use it. So just keep that in mind. Some people also will chamfer their housings as well to match a port. So just be aware of that. You could buy a housing that's got the edge chopped down to match a port. So it's a lot of info in this video but i wanted to just kind of brain dump all of the the things that i think about when i rebuild engines right so if you do go through and replace hard seals on your rotor right so you're going to replace apex seals corner seals side seals all that stuff i would try my best if i were you to scotch ride or at least i, I wouldn't like scuff it with sandpaper but you want to clean this up get the get the grime and stuff get the grime and stuff off of these if you have somebody that can resurface or lap your irons and resurface your housings, if you're going to put new parts in it, you're going to see better compression results sooner if you have that done, right? Um, there's no way to hone a rotor housing, right? When you build a piston engine, you can hone the cylinder so it's all smooth again, put new rings in it, and they bed in quicker, right? If you take a brand new apex seal like this one and put it on a housing that's got grooves in it, there's going to be, you know, microscopic little grooves that air is going to leak by and you won't have as much compression. Now, people always say, oh, just drive it for 1,000, 2,000 miles. It'll bed in. It'll start easier, right, once you've got it, once you've driven it a while. And, yes, that is very much true. If you put new apex seals on used housings, it's going to take a while for the apex seals to match the housings. You're going to have to drive it. I mean, there's no way to get around it. So, things to think about. If... At any point, you have further questions than what I've outlined in this video, comment below, okay? I hope that kind of goes through it. Definitely, definitely go online, wherever this book is. I think it's in the, I think I linked the PDF in my video about it and look at that because that is important to be able to decide if you're going to build an engine that's cheap or build an engine that's expensive, okay? Full-blown, like race engines, balance, the whole deal, like this one, for example. This is a... Chips Motorsports balanced rotating assembly with a half bridge port REW block, okay? And we're putting it in this FD right here with this giant turbo. So that engine, right, is all specced out. That's probably a $5,000 engine, right? When you have iRotary Apex seals, all new Mazda side seals, all self-clearance or clearance to fit. You've got new corner seals. You've got all the new bearings in it. You've got all the money and time it goes into getting your rotors balanced and the counterweight and stuff because this counterweight and the front counterweight are now balanced to those rotors, like to the T, right? And those rotors have the cool machining that say Chips Motorsports on the side. They're real pretty, right? So to get all that stuff done is going to cost money, right? And there's stuff you can't do at home, you know? Whereas 
the rally car, when I rebuilt that engine, right, used irons, used housings, the same rotors, the same E-shaft, it got new bearings, it got new apex seals, it got new side seals, got all new rotor springs. That rebuild over there probably cost twelve to $1,500, right? That's not a huge rebuild. I did all the, the assembly and cleaning and this, that, and the other myself. It's a stock six port, nothing crazy, right? But it's also not going to make 500 horsepower. Okay, so this one's going to need the attention to detail so it doesn't come apart. But I don't know. Hopefully that uh, that clears some stuff up. I know this video is long-winded. I'll try my best to cut it back down. Um, I hope that answers your question. I generally don't like to speak to any manufacturers as far as on my videos to say I prefer one over the other because it's all personal preference and I have engines that I build with other seals and engines that I do with these seals and preference why I like these water seals versus these and this, that, and the other. And I know you guys are going to want me to talk about that stuff, but the rotary community is small and I really just like to do my own thing. If you go watch my videos, in each video when I build an engine, I'll tell you what I'm using, but I'm not going to say X is better than Z for any particular reason. You guys can ask the questions in the forums, you guys can read the reviews and figure it out yourself. Um, I'm trying to just, I'm staying neutral with everything, okay? So, with that being said, comment below any questions. I can always add and film more of these build secrets stuff. I call it build secrets, but it's really just not secrets. I don't like to keep that many secrets. Um, and help you guys learn. I've got enough, you know, and have had enough experience breaking stuff to be able to kind of talk to, to things like that. And the other thing, okay, if you've bought an engine, and maybe I ought to put this at the very beginning of the video. If you've bought an engine from somebody and it's locked up, don't expect anything to be reusable all right you might luck out and things might be okay you might spot an engine that's full of rust and it's going to be ruined on the inside you're going to have pitting on the irons you're going to have housings that have huge rust lines in them where the apex seal sat for 30 years in a field you're going to have rotors that look like this right here straight up titanic level rust in this rotor these apex seals ain't coming out of here you know that's going to take some effort to get those out of there right and sure, you know, 30 years from now, if I can't get any other rotor, I'm not going to throw this one away. I might be able to use it. It's not damaged. It's just rusty, right? So just don't expect somebody to say, well, I parked my car in the field 10 years ago and uh, it still turns over. Da, da, da. Don't just expect to have to replace a whole lot of stuff, okay? Because the worst thing to do is to buy a car for more than what you want and then be sitting on it because you paid too much and you can't afford to build the engine. You can't afford to build the engine right. So keep that in mind. I hope that this clears some stuff up. It's kind of a bonus video for a Monday because, um, well, I had a bunch of people ask me questions about it, so I figured I'd make it. And if you listen to all of it and this, that, and the other, I'd buy you a cookie, but obviously there's a distance issue here. So thank you guys very much for tuning in, for learning, for trying to figure out this stuff and Comment below, like I said, any questions. I can do my best to answer all of them. Most of these videos, like this kind of video, don't get a whole don't they don't get a ton of traffic, so it's easy for me to track the comments and make sure that you guys are getting your questions answered. And uh with that, I'm gonna go clean some FD engine parts so that I can keep dressing this one up. And I will see you guys in the next video about first gens because we went and had some super much fun with turbo and my bridgeport car tearing it up so thank you guys very much for watching we'll see you in the next one keep it red man i don't need a drink after talking that long still can't believe that was cracked the other thing i can't believe um that engine got built with that cracked. It got torn apart because of a coolant seal failure. No coolant seal failure was found. Put back together, still had the same coolant seal failure. But that is, you live and learn, right? Now, I'm, now I know and they know. Always look in here. Make sure it's healthy. This is an FD iron from a build. See how pitted this is. It's going to need lapped for sure before I would run that. This housing's trash. This one's usable. I got a bunch of other trash stuff up here as well.
It's good fun. That is a good complete motor. My Bridgeport plates, street port plates, six port plates, spare motor for the six port race car for the other car out there. This is a uh, this is a street street port at REW. This over here rebuilt street port four port for my red truck since I traded Calvin my turbo block for that and then this is another motor for the red truck or the one that came in the red truck got all sorts of stuff peace